stands for cation exchange capacity. It's a silly word, it sounds confusing, so just remember it is CEC. So when a farmer or a landscaper <laughs> does, a, does a soil test, it'll tell them what the nutrient levels are, it'll tell them the pH, it'll also say the CEC, cation exchange capacity. Now you guys are sixth graders and you're about to become the most advanced farmers on the planet because for whatever reason, farmers have still not understood soil. So what CEC really means is how big your cup is. So imagine that the soil on your farm is a cup. It can hold this much nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. CEC is the ability for the soil to hold nutrients. So if I have a CEC of let's say 9.2, my cup is like this. If I have a CEC of let's say 35, my cup's more like this size. The reason why I want to know how big my cup is, is so I know how to not waste money in fertilizer. Now, why would I want to put a gallon of water in this cup? Like, you guys realize what would happen, right? The water would spill out, it would overflow. That overflow is what we call nutrient leaching, fertilizer leaching. So that overflow creates all these algae blooms that we're having in the state of Florida, guys. It's because landscapers and farmers aren't understanding the ability of the soil. So here in Florida, we have a CEC of a, a low one because of sand. So I did a soil sample yesterday that had a CEC of 9.2, which is like a cup like this. I'm not saying I can't drink a gallon of water out of this cup. I'm saying I'm gonna wanna drink each cup and then keep filling it up instead of just going, yep. <laughs> it's like imagine a blind guy pouring a, a glass of water. If you're blind, you gotta understand what kind of cup you're working with, right? So my CEC was a 9.2, right? So 9.2. Now think about this piece of ground. I'm wanting to grow corn in this piece of ground, okay? So I'm wanting to figure out how much nitrogen that my field needs for that corn. Now when I ask a farmer, hey, how much nitrogen are you putting down on your field? Well, I got pretty good soil, you know, so I put down quite a bit. That's not a very good answer. It's a simple math, dudes. Check this out. What I'm going to do, take 9.2, and I'm going to take it times 10 to figure out my corn ratio. So times that by 10, all you do is move that decimal over, right? So I've got 92 pounds. So 92 pounds per acre is how much nitrogen that I want to use. Well, I also need to keep in mind about what's called residual nitrogen. Now residual nitrogen is like how much nitrogen is already in the field. So let's say this cup, I'm trying to figure out how much water I can put in the cup without spilling it. But let's say there's already a little bit of water in the cup. If I just take the measurement of the cup, I'm still gonna spill stuff out, right? Yep. So the residual nitrogen, let's say I planted a row crop of soybeans this previous year. Now soybeans fixate their own nitrogen in the soil and the roots. So this would give me about 40 pounds of residual nitrogen. So I take that 92 and I minus 40. 52. See how hard that math was? It's crazy. You know what I'm saying right now? Is now I know perfectly well with my soil that I can only put on 52 pounds of nitrogen per acre in order to get the maximum benefits from my crop yields without knowing that simple times 10 minus the residual, do you know what usually happens? A farmer is gonna put on 120 to sometimes even, I've seen 280 parts or pounds per acre, guys. Let's take the bottom number. Let's not go to 280 and be drastic. Let's just say the 120, 52 pounds. That means that that farmer was going to actually use over twice as much fertilizer as he needed on his corn, all because he didn't know an equation. But the genius part about this is you guys can help me teach the farmers a little bit better way, because the farmer wants to know this math, because that math just saved the farmer twice as much money on his fertilizer bill. If he knows that his crop's going to be the same yield 
whether he puts on 52 pounds or 160 pounds, he's going to go with the 52 pounds and save a lot of money per acre. Mm -hmm. But how do we win? Because every pound of nitrogen that isn't washing out of this cup isn't going into the waterways. That's where we're getting these algae blooms at. So the more money that we can save a farmer, the lower it, 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 it costs to eat our food and the better our nature is. You know, so this is what happens when we make ag science and ocean conservation two different subjects. Ag science and water and limnology should be the same subject. Limnology is the study of water. You know, so we need to understand these simple relationships, guys, because you're sixth graders and you know more about farming now than most big time farmers. Now, when you say, when somebody asks, how much nitrogen do you use? Like, well, I use 52 pounds per acre. Well, how? And you go, well, I took the cation exchange capacity, multiplied it by 10, and then I subtracted my residual nitrogen. And one of the biggest farmers in the world is going to look like a sixth grader and offer you a job and go like, like, wow, I, I just know I got good dirt and I put a lot of it on. You know, like there's no like real math. That, you know, like you don't sit there and play a video game and expect to just make up a cheat code, right? You're looking up that cheat code to make sure you know what it is and have it written down when you turn the game on. You don't just get out there and wing it, right? So think about that, guys. That's an awesome way that you can, one, be a dude and get yourself a date because you're going to sound super, super smart when you're talking about agriculture and gardening to your girlfriend. And two, you ladies out there, you need to remember, boys are going to do what girls want them to do. That's how the world works, okay? That's why we boys are always trying to be cool and do this and that. The point being is what if the ladies made us start stepping up our game? Instead of it being romantic to give you a dozen roses, what if you said, no, I want you to plant one dozen native flowers for me in my honor? You know? <laughs> what, if, what if we just changed that paradigm a little bit? Because the thing is, is people need to realize that it's cool to save the planet. You know, on average, we're losing 200 species of animals a day to extinction. That's five times faster than when the dinosaurs went extinct. And you guys don't even realize it. Yet our parents, they're giving us water